today we are flying with Ruby. So we'll show you how to fly with your pet. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ali Hoth. If you are new here, I own and run Oodles of Doodles Utah, and that is my doodle breeding program where we breed golden doodles, uh, mini golden doodles, mini sheep doodles, and soon to be burned doodles. I'm super excited for all of those. And one of the services that we offer is that I can fly the puppy to you. I know that sometimes it's hard for you to take time off work to come pick up your puppy or if you have children, it's hard to get on a plane for multiple hours and pick up this dog. And I wanna meet every single one of my puppy families in person, whether that's on my front door or at their airport, I wanna meet them because that is very important to me. We have lots of communica communication throughout the whole process between me and the puppy families, but I really like to get to know them and we're become friends. Like we wanna be, I wanna be friends with them. So, with flying your puppy comes a lot of different things and I wanted to film a video to explain to you how to fly with your puppy or your furry friend. I've never flown with a cat, I've only flown with dogs <laughs> with puppies um, and they've ranged from eight weeks old to six months old. So I've got a wide age range and I've flown multiple different airlines and I just want to combine all that information to share it with you whether if you're going to pick up a puppy from a breeder or your breeder flying out a puppy, I want to create this I want to create this video so that I can give you all the information to prepare you for what's coming and the plane flight ahead. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, number one, is get your plane ticket. So from the research that I've done, plane tickets normally go on sale or are the cheapest about six weeks before you leave. I don't schedule for my puppies the plane flights. Um, it's around that six weeks before they're going to go home. Um, I've flown puppies and got tickets a week before we have to leave, which has worked out fine. They're just more expensive. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, Alaskan Airlines, they have to be eight weeks old. And this is what I've, the research that I've gathered. It could change when you see this video. This is as of today, February 28th. Um, 2022 this is what's been put out there and they most likely will change but this is what I've found and what I've researched and gathered so Alaskan Airlines must be eight weeks old Delta must be 10 weeks old for traveling inside the United States they have a different age requirement for traveling outside of the United States um, American Airlines they have to be eight weeks old when traveling and Southwest eight weeks old so you want to get your plane ticket and you want to make sure that your puppy meets those requirements. So if you get a plane ticket and you're flying Delta, you have to wait till 10 weeks for them to be able to fly home to you or home with you. Um, so keep in mind that there's different ages for different airlines. So when you're picking a flight or you're having a puppy nanny or if you're having your breeder fly the puppy out to you, make sure that you keep in mind that age requirement. So. Once you've got your ticket, you're going to need to get a health certificate for your puppy or your dog. So my vet does health certificates and you have to know the airline and the flight that you're going on to put on this health certificate. Um, it includes the puppy's weight and all the puppy's information and age to make sure that they're okay and healthy to fly. My vet charges around $50 to $70 for this vet certificate. Um, if you're a puppy, family or puppy buyer and you're going to get it from the breeder, the breeder can get it for you and you can just reimburse them however you guys want to work that out. They can get it for you before you fly home or before you take your puppy home. For me, I get that done and I make sure to have that in paper with me when I'm flying because sometimes that is needed. But it's needed all the time but sometimes they check um, and sometimes they don't but you always want to be prepared for that. Um, what else? Oh, the health certificate also says where they're going because different states have different requirements as far as pets coming in or going out. Okay, so um, after you've got your health certificate, 
you need to make sure you have all your supplies. So the first thing that you need is going to be a carrier. So I've got a couple things. I don't have everything that you need right here because we are uh, preparing to move. <laughs> so everything's kind of packed up at the moment, but this is my carrier. So as you can see, I've got a little Sherpa rug in there and it folds down. This I got on Amazon and I can put a link in the description below and you can fold it up super easy, but you can open it on the top and you can open it on this side, which is really, really handy. Um, and it also has these. So if you wanna hook a strap from this side to this side, you can do that or I just carry it like this. But this does get heavy when you're carrying multiple puppies. Like one time I was carrying two six pound puppies and it was 12 pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're carrying them on your shoulder or your arm all day long, it's a lot. Um, this comes with the Sherpa lining that I showed you. And it also has a hard, you can kind of see it, a hard um, little mat at the bottom. So I always make sure to even put puppy pads over that Sherpa. It's The Sherpa makes it so that hard pad isn't as hard when they're laying on it. And so it makes it a little bit more comfy. But I make sure I have puppy pads in here because um, when we fly, I always... So if we fly early in the morning, I don't let the puppies have water or food at least two to three hours before we go. Because I don't want them to poop in the plane or um, they can... They can poop before and I always take them out potty before, but I don't want them to have accidents in the plane because you're kind of in a sticky situation where you don't know what to do. And it's it's difficult when you have an accident on the plane. It does happen. You can't 100% prevent it, but I mean, you can try your best, prevent it like I do. So I always have puppy pads on there um, because sometimes they pee, sometimes they poop and that just helps absorb it and helps you clean up the mess a little bit easier and just makes it overall yeah, don't forget puppy pads. So this carrier is a size large. I have used it for a six month old puppy. I have used it for two eight week old puppies. I've used it for one nine week old puppy. I've used it for a lot of age ranges. So when you pick your flight, um, each individual airplane will have a certain requirement for this carry on for your, um, your puppy crate carrier carrier and the flight attendant or the person when you call to I'll explain it later but you want to make sure that this meets your airplane requirements and when you add your dog or add your puppy they will double check with you like I said this is a large I've never had a problem with this it's been able to squish under if it needs to um, and it has because under the carry-on can be very squishy. You just want to make sure that your dog has enough room. And my puppies are small and so they all just kind of curl up just right here. And this can kind of squish under or they just snuggle in nice and tight. Um, with this six months old puppy, he was pretty big right here. Um, but he still fit. And yes, it was a little squishy, but he did fine and he loved it because he just snuggled up and fell asleep. Okay, so this is the crate to the carrier. Um, like I said, I'll link it down below on Amazon. I've loved it. It's also a kind of water resistant material. So it makes it super easy to clean if you do have accidents. And like I said, you can try and prevent them, but it's gonna be hard to prevent them and you can always do your best. So after you have that, um, I don't have a collapsible bowl with me, but you need a collapsible bowl for food and for water. Um, I don't feed my puppies until I get off the plane, but immediately after I get off the plane, I go in a bathroom and I lay puppy pads down and I put food in a little bowl and have them eat food and drink water. Um, the next thing is a leash and a collar. So this is huge, but when you go through security, if you have any metal, you have to take that off. So I recommend getting a leash and a collar that has plastic on it if you can because they don't have to take off their collar and their leash while you're going through security. I have done that with two puppies. I have had no leash, no collar, and I've had to carry them like this. I made it, it was fine, it was very stressful, but if you can find a plastic leash and collar, it will save you a lot of headache, but if you don't, 
it's fine. You'll make it through it. Um, the next thing is like bent bones. So something for them to chew on and distract them. Um, when the plane takes off or when it lands, loud noises happen and you want to have something in the crate to kind of distract them um, and divert their attention because uh, like I said, they're very loud noises and we prepare our puppies for that as far as noises will play them beforehand so they are kind of used to it. Um, but you still need something to distract and divert their attention. So I use Benna Bones. Um, Trying to think of what else. Uh, some toys. You can bring two toys. Um, but try not to bring too many. Only bring like two or three. Counting the bed bone if you're going to bring that as well. Because you don't want to have too many toys that you have dog toys coming out of your ears. You want to just keep it to a bare minimum. Uh, puppy pads, again, huge, huge to keep those on. Um, with puppies that aren't fully vaccinated, you have to be super careful. So whenever I go anywhere and I let the puppy touch anything before, I put a puppy pad down so they're not touching the ground because they can get a lot of diseases from airports, especially pet relief areas. So you want to make sure that there's a, there's a puppy pad, a pee pad, between the floor and their feet. Um, blankets. So we always send a home or send a blanket home with mom scent on it and the litter mate scent on it. Bring that. If your breeder has one and you're going to pick up your puppy, make sure that they send it with you or um, a t-shirt or a toy or something that has the litter mates and the mom smell on it. If you are the breeder and you're flying out a puppy, make sure to bring that with you. It will give them something to comfort while they're on the plane. Um, something familiar. The next thing, snacks, make sure snacks for you. Um, I also bring a little thing of dog food, like I said with the food and bringing food. Um, and sometimes I'll give them little pieces of the dog food. Like when we're taking off, I'll just kind of give them a couple pieces of dog food and just a little treat kind of and letting them know that it's okay. Um, but you wanna bring snacks for you because I don't know about you, but when I, I went to Pennsylvania once and I had to get up at like, 4.35 and be to the airport and it was a four and a half hour flight and I just had the cookies and crackers that was on the plane and my ginger ale and that was it from there and back and I didn't really have time to stop and eat somewhere because I was flying to Pennsylvania I was getting off uh, passing on the puppy to the new family and then coming straight back so I would always bring snacks for you make sure to check your airline and um, the rules and restrictions of the airports to make sure that you're bringing appropriate snacks and snacks that you're able to bring. Um, next thing is bring an empty water bottle. So with the airport restrictions, you can only bring a cup, I can't remember if it's like three ounces, but you can't really fill up your water bottle and then bring it on the plane. So what I recommend is just bringing an empty one and filling it up when you get there because water bottles in the airport are so expensive because they know they know that you can't bring water in. So bring your own water bottle and then fill it up when you get there. Because you can use that water for you and for the puppy as well. Um, like I said, I try not to feed them too much before we get on the plane. But as soon as we get after or get off the plane, I'll feed them food and water. Um, poop bags. Poop bags are huge. Um, I've had to clean up multiple poops in the carrier and um, I always sanitize it after, but it makes it so much easier. If you've got a poop bag, you can just, it doesn't even have to be poop or pee. If you have a rag or if you've got a gross toy or something, you can, it's always really nice to just use that poop bag and pick it up rather than your bare hands. Um, and the last thing is have so much fun and take lots of pictures. So I love taking pictures, obviously, as you guys probably know, and videos, but this is a moment that's super special for the breeder taking the puppy there, or if you're bringing your puppy home, it, you're more than likely only gonna be bring your puppy once on an airplane. So document as much as possible because you won't regret it and you'll take so many cute pictures. Um, I do happen to have a blog post with a lot of links in it for all the things that I mentioned before, um, collars and leashes and puppy pads and blankets and stuff that I've used. Um, they are affiliate links through Amazon. So I have to disclose that. But if you go through that blog, it gives you step-by-step -step as well. 
after or what I just told you it gives you step by step um oh the last thing is when you are about ready to go 24 hours before your flight you can add your dog so with adding your dog they are going to ask you the size of carrier that you're bringing like I said mine is a large um and they always say oh they have to be with in this amount of inches and this and I'm like yep yeah, mine is and um, sometimes mine's been a little squishy because it hasn't been under that, but I've never had any problem with it and it's been awesome. Um, but you do have to add your pet on because your pet has a plane ticket as well because they can only allow a certain amount of dogs on the airplane and that's service dogs and dogs and carry-ons, which is what we're doing is by having this, the carry-on carrier, um, and so they can only have a certain amount. So you want to make sure to get on, get their ticket as soon as you can. Um, Delta has a texting thing that you can text them and say, hey, this is my flight number. And you just have to wait in line until someone can help you. A lot of the other airlines you have to call. And what happens is, is that you'll call and say, I need to add my puppy to my flight. And they'll ask you what breed it is, how big it is. They have to be under 20 pounds to fly. So once you add that on and get all the information and tell them about your carrier, then you're good until you get to the counter. Um, I know that Delta and Alaskan Airlines and American have apps that you can check on before, but if you're flying with a puppy, you can't do that because you still have to pay. They don't really take your payments over the phone. You, they want you to pay at the counter. Um, and so once you've paid at the counter, then you can go and check in and go through security, but you can't check in. Like I've flown with um, my mom and brother, or my mom and sister and my husband, and they were able to check in online. I was able to check in on my phone for them, but I couldn't check in because the puppy ticket was attached to mine, uh, my ticket, because they have to check the puppy before you go on. Um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure you have that on because it's, if you wait to the last minute until you're showing up there, there's a chance that you might not be able to bring the puppy with you. So always make sure that you add it on 24 hours ahead. This um, price for this is about $125. That's what I've kind of found the um, average to be between different flight um, airlines. And so make sure to have that done prior to arriving at the airport, just because it makes it easier for you and you are guaranteed to bring your puppy on. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, I have a blog post about this and I will link it down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it's informative to you and if you fly with your puppies let me know or if you have ever flown with your dog let me know um and yeah that's it we um got here about 20 minutes before our plane was boarding we made it through security and we boarded Sprinted the whole way. Now you stink. Ruby. Hi. <laughs>